Hey there everyone, I'm back with a new random video and today the idea that popped into my head was some of the most immersive shooter type games I have played over the years. No BS or long intro this time, so let's just jump right into this. These are in no particular order, and if you'd like to see a part 2 with some of maybe your favorites, please like, comment, and subscribe. Here we go. Starting off, I know some of you may expect to see the new Star Wars Battlefront games here, and they're definitely great, but I still believe nothing compares or comes close to the original Battlefront series that we saw in 2004-2005. I personally played Battlefront 2 the most, and even with its limited development time, it and its predecessor were easily some of the greatest passion projects the Star Wars franchise has ever seen. These games did not have to be this good, there did not have to be a campaign mode narrated by Tamura Morrison, there did not have to be tons of minigames and instant action modes that provided endless hours of enjoyment, and there also did not have to be arguably the greatest mode of all time, Galactic Conquest. The reason I consider this game so immersive is because it was on such a broad scale instead of being some on-rail campaign shooter. The original Battlefront series puts you into a variety of different roles as a boots-on-the-ground unit, or maybe even a lightsaber-wielding hero, giving you the ability to see the universe of Star Wars in many different angles and the story of the 501st Legion still gives everyone chills and just exemplified the extremely dark undertones the Star Wars series actually had. This next title will come as no surprise if you've been around the channel long enough, and it comes from the Battlefield series. There are many Battlefield titles now in the series, and the community has always been divided on what title takes the mantle of the greatest of all time, but personally, for me, the title that takes the cake is Battlefield 1. In some cases, I feel Battlefield 1 went a little underappreciated. Although this title doesn't scream historically accurate at times, it screams immersion in droves. Battlefield 1 is arguably the one title in the series that delivers exactly what it said it would, an all-out war experience set during the Great War period. Some players did not like the optimization for a more casual playstyle, and some were maybe even hoping for a for done like Milsim game, but in my opinion, what we got from Battlefield 1 couldn't have been a more perfect experience. If anything, the game got a vast majority of players into the topic of World War I history, and I truly believe raised awareness to an almost forgotten conflict, which is amazing in and of itself. Battlefield 1 also had an incredible color palette and atmosphere surrounding every campaign mission and multiplayer map. The graphics and attention to detail are still something developers are chasing today, which makes me feel this game deserves much more respect from the FPS community, and for a casual type shooter, Battlefield 1 just screamed immersive, and is one of the few casual type games that drove one point home. War is absolutely hell. The next title I chose for this list I decided should be close to Battlefield 1, because if there are two casual shooters that deserve an award for the most gritty visceral experience possible, it's Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty World at War. I honestly don't even have words to describe how good this game was to me as a kid. Out of any Call of Duty title, this one left me shaken to my core. As soon as you see the opening cutscene and hear the bone-chilling menu music, you know you're in for maybe a different kind of Call of Duty. I still remember the day me and my friends rented this from Blockbuster to try it out, and when we first opened the game as 12 year olds, we just looked at each other and wondered, what the hell are we about to get into? This was by far the darkest Call of Duty game of all time, and honestly, I don't know about any of you, but this was one game that kept me awake at night. This game actually gave me nightmares, and its dark tone still sits in my brain all these years later. I swear, I still hear the menu music calling to me. World at War, to me, needs no explanation, and honestly, it's just something you had to experience yourself. In a time when World War II shooters were dying, this game set the standard from that point on, and the developers have been trying to chase that visceral experience for years now. Big surprise here after World at War, 
I made a short review on it a little bit ago, and this game, for me, checks all the boxes on what I've been saying previously. And then some. The next title is Hell Let Loose. Obviously, a much different experience from the previous titles on this list, Hell Let Loose is a milsim experience that relies heavily on teamwork, communication, and cooperation. Down to its core, this game screams immersion, and it may not be perfect, but when you think of war reenactments, this is an exact virtual representation of that. Hell Let Loose is nothing fancy, and has this no BS attitude about it, and like I said in my review, it's all about just jumping into a game to experience a war-torn hellscape until one team comes out on top. It's something most shooter games used to strictly focus on. Also, all of these games on this list are incredibly fun and amazing, but if you're like me, they all leave you with the reminder that in reality, it's really not all fun and games. Some of this stuff is pretty brutal, and it makes you think, and that's what I believe makes these games so great. It's the staying power that they have inside people's minds. Before the last title I have chosen for this random list, I feel it's only fair to give the Arma series an honorable mention here, as when I came up with the idea for this video, a few of my friends that enjoy some of my content asked if I had ever played Arma before. More specifically, Arma Reforger. Arma Reforger is another milsim experience set during the Cold War period, and from my brief knowledge and few videos I have watched on the internet, this game seems to have come a long way and is easily one of the top games on my list that I am eager to try out. Arma is currently available on the PC and Xbox Series S and X, and is supposed to be a super authentic and realistic experience. At least, that's what my friends tell me. The final title I have chosen for this list may come as a surprise, and honestly, I am just getting my feet wet into this game myself, but even after only a few hours of gameplay, I had to put the Insurgency series on this list. Insurgency Sandstorm more specifically. Insurgency Sandstorm is a tactical first-person shooter that has a variety of different game modes that include co-op modes, survival modes, and online multiplayer modes and each mode feels very open-ended with a sandbox-type layout, which gives you multiple ways to approach every different situation. After my short time in the game so far, I have been blown away by the overall scale of immersion they tried implementing here. The mixture of fast-paced, objective-based game modes, along with class systems that include command-type roles, as well as an immersive and unique way of communication between teammates using either proximity chat or the call-out options, makes me believe this is a perfect bridge between games like Hell Let Loose, Arma, and Call of Duty and the Battlefield series. And so far, the few people I have played with on my team seem totally fine with helping newer players as long as you communicate and play the objective. I've honestly only played a few game modes so far, but this definitely feels like my type of game, and I am eager to try everything this game has to offer. I may even consider trying previous titles in the series, as from what I was told from the other players who play this game, the previous title was even better. This game may not have a crazy amount of environmental destruction, but I believe the extreme focus on tactical play makes up for that and is really a non-issue when it comes down to the raw gameplay. Well, everyone, I believe that about wraps this one up. I apologize if this one is a little shorter this time. Like I said earlier in the video, if you enjoyed this or stuff like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know if you'd like to see something similar in the future or anything else. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.